This video is about specific latent heat and we'll start by writing down the definitions of the two types of latent heat. So the first one, specific latent heat of fusion, we can also call it L fusion of a substance, that's the amount of energy needed to change one kilogram of that substance from solid to liquid at its melting point. And then the specific latent heat of vaporization, LVAP, of a substance is the amount of energy needed to change one kilogram of the substance from liquid to gas at its boiling point. So the definitions might sound a bit boring, but all of the details are actually really important. And they also tell us what the equation is, just from the words. So if we write down either of these as an equation, you can see that they're both an amount of energy, and then um, for, for one kilogram, which means that we can write down that the latent heat is equal to Q over M. So Q is the heat transferred to the material and M is the mass. And if we rearrange that a bit, we'll get the one that you're probably more used to seeing, which is that Q is equal to ML. So this formula we can use to calculate the heat needed to change any mass of material from one state into another if we know the specific latent heat. Um, let's do an example of this. It's a bit of a marathon example, so just bear with me. So the question is, how much energy is needed to turn 250 grams of ice at negative 20 degrees Celsius into steam at positive 120 degrees Celsius? So that's a good question, isn't it? Uh, how are we going to solve it? Should we draw the phase change graph, perhaps? That might be a good way to structure things, because we're going to have a lot of things happening here, aren't we? So, could we have some axes, please? Oh yeah, that looks good. Um, but you forgot to label the axes. Thank you. And I think we're going to need a bit of data. Thank you very much. So now we're ready to start the problem, aren't we? So the beginning is that we have minus 20 degrees Celsius ice and we need to heat that up to zero degrees because once we get to zero degrees the ice is going to melt. So we're going to have to do a Q equals MC delta T on that, aren't we? Because it's heating up. So we plug our numbers in. Remember that 250 grams is the same as 0 0.25 kilograms. And other than that, we have all the numbers. So we plug them all in and we get that the energy is 10 kilojoules. And next thing we're going to need to do is to melt that ice. And we can use our latent heat equation for that. So Q equals ML. And we have all of the values. We just plug them in and we get 82.5 kilojoules. So, so far... We've used up 10 plus 82.5 kilojoules. We'll do the rounding at the end, by the way. So, altogether we have 92.5 kilojoules. That's how much we've used. And next we're going to have to heat up the water from freezing temperature up to boiling temperature. So from 0 to 100 degrees, that's the temperature difference of 100. And we plug in all of that into the MC delta T formula. So we get 0.25 kilograms times 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin times 100 Kelvins. And if we put that in our calculator, it gives us 105 kilojoules. So adding that to our running total that we had, we are now at 197.5 kilojoules. And as I said, we'll round it at the end. Right, so now we have water at 100 degrees Celsius and we're going to need to boil it all off to become steam. And again we're going to use the latent heat equation. So we'll plug it into Q equals ML and we get a whopping 575 kilojoules. That's much more than we had so far. And we're going to have to add that to our 197.5. When we add them together we get 772.5 and 
and we're gonna have to do a little bit at the end as well because we need the steam to be at 120 degrees degrees Celsius. So it probably won't make that big a difference, but let's do it anyway. So we get that Q is MC delta T, and it's 20 degrees that we're increasing it by, and that means that we need 9.5 kilojoules. So it's quite small compared to our total so far, but we add it on and we get a grand total of 782 kilojoules. Now just think about significant figures. If you look at all of the values that we have written in green, they're all to two significant figures. And all of the values in the beginning of the problem were also pretty much two significant figures. So that means that we should probably round our final answer to two significant figures as well. So we're going to say that the answer is that we need approximately 780 kilojoules of energy.